All right. So I've got something kind of set up here. So we're going to go over context, the context API in React. And I'll, I'm going to do this functionally, although the class based way isn't the, the, the basic setup is the same. Um, so why would you use context, the context API in an app? You can avoid having to pass um, things all the way from the top to like a really deeply um, situated component. Yeah. So one one use case one. So first off, you don't need you know you don't need the context API to do anything. It's basically a convenience. It doesn't mean it's bad that you shouldn't use it, but it's, it's, in some ways, it's not really a new. Uh, functionality. But yeah, so if you have a case where you need to pass props through a bunch of intermediaries, then you can you can kind of get around that by using the, the context API. Another kind of related use case is if a whole bunch of components need the same props. You can also uh, handle it that way. So you don't have to individually pass props to all these other uh, components. You can just kind of localize, you can centralize the, the information or the, the prop that you, that you want everything to have. And then just basically all the other components that need it will have direct access to that, that container component. So that's why you would do that. So the example that we're gonna have here is the first example that just said, where we have um, we have some information, let's say like whether or not a user is logged in, and the we, we're going to keep that information at the top level in the app, um, but there's a component very far down in the in the tree that needs that, and the intermediate components do not need that information. So how how would we do that? Uh, without using the context API. Well, we'd go here and we can see that here's a component. This is all, this is all functional. And there's a button to you know, log a user in or out. And then if we want this login information to go from intermediate one, intermediate two, intermediate three, and um, basically intermediate three will is, is the gatekeeper for whether or not protected page displays. So we could pass this down as a prop. We can say is logged in. We do is logged in. And then in intermediate one, we do the same thing. So we have access to that prop and I'll uh, destructure it. So is logged in, we'll pass that along. And then we'll have to do the same thing. So this component will also have the is logged in. And then here we'll decide We'll do our conditional rendering here. So if we refresh this, let's make sure that state is true. It's the false intermediate one has the props. So let's make sure this is changing. False. Okay. Intermediate two has the same prop, which is also changing. Intermediate three. Uh, why does intermediate three not have that prop? as I'm not passing it. Uh, so I skipped one. 
Let's get the intermediate though. So now this is working as expected. So this, this works, right? There's nothing really magical about this. It's just passing props, which we've seen a million times. It's just going a few levels deep. We can, uh, you know, this, in some way this is wasteful or there's a lot of repetition in the code or it makes it harder to, to reuse this stuff because now, you know, anytime we change anything, we have to change it in a bunch of different places. So we can avoid this issue by using uh, context. So in order to use context, first we have to create a, uh, we have to create it. And we create it. It's uh, it's basically like a it's basically a component. So you need to create this component, and you do that simply by calling uh, a function. So I have this context. I have my components folder here. I have my context folder here. So I'm going to create a user context. So we're basically just making a component that's gonna store information for us that the other components can directly access. So we're gonna import, so the function is gonna be called create context. And this, this is how it works regardless of whether you're using functional or class-based components. So uh, import uh, create context from React. And then we're going to create that. We're going to call the function and we'll return uh, a value, which will be a component. And then we'll export that. So const and here, we're just going to call it with uh, no parameters or no, no uh, arguments, but we could, we could add basically default values here, but we're not gonna do that. So export All right. And this user contest can hold anything. It can hold um, functions or uh, you know so it's not it's not restricted to just you know data. you can also have functions in here. So we create this this context component. And then when we create the context component, we need to figure out wherever we are in our application, kind of the, the head node where all the other components need that particular context. So in this case, everything from here on down will need this context. So we're gonna wrap this component in uh, in that context component that we just created. We'll import that. Uh, and the thing is this component that we created, this user context component, it has two parts, kind of two sub components. One is the provider. Um, which we'll have to use here. And the other is a consumer. So if you're doing class-based components, you have to explicitly wrap whatever consumer um, in a, a consumer component. If, you use, uh, if you're using hooks, then you can just call the function. So it's, it's simpler if you use hooks, but, but this part is the same for both. So you have the provider, and this is built in. All 
Okay, so we have this provider component. And now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna pass in, so this state is what we care about. This is what we wanna be globally or you know, widely available within our application. So we're gonna pass this in as a prop here. And we have to call this value. And we'll just pass in is logged in. So now we can avoid all of the, the prop drilling going from component to component to component. We just pass it in to this. I'm gonna get rid of this one. And I'm gonna delete this from other components. All right, let's see if this is, okay. So now I, I don't, I'm not passing props anymore to these other components. And let me just check the third one, get rid of this. So just for now, so I don't get an error, I'm just gonna add a dummy value. Okay, so now this is just a dummy value it's displaying. So now we're, we're ready to, <clears throat> to consume the context. So we have the provider, we, we created the context right here, which is just a matter of calling this create context function, which is gonna return a component that we can use. And this component is gonna have two kind of sub components built into it. One is the provider, and this is where you, you determine in your application, where is the top level node under which everything needs this information. And you wrap that component or components in a provider. And then when you want to consume it, you can ignore all of the intermediaries and go straight to where you want to use it. <clears throat> and when you go there, you're going to have a use context hook. So the use context, uh, use context hook, you can import just like any other hook. It's built into React. And instead of doing this right here, saying this dummy value, we're gonna call use context. And we're gonna pass it that context object or the context component that we made over here, user context. Maybe I'll get, all right, auto import. So I call this use context hook and I pass it the, the context object that we created. And now I can, use, I can use that right here in this component directly. So it's, it's as though this component were a direct child of the, uh, the context provider. So now we can do something like, let's see if, since I made it a simple value, it should work, yeah. So if, if we look at the dev tools, you see we have our app and then this provider, context provider. And if you, if you look around in the, in the router, the React React router DOM, React DOM router, it, uh, it 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 uses this kind of thing. So this context dot provider, it's wrapping this intermediate component, and even though even though um, intermediate three is not a direct child of context dot provider, it has direct access to to what context provider is, um, is providing through the hook. So this context is false. So, I mean, that's, that's, basically, that's basically it. So now, now we have uh, our state 
in app still, we create this other component, which is kind of like you can think of as just like floating out over here somewhere. And then we can directly access what's in here from any other component that we need. So the the state is being set within app, is that right? And then that's yeah. that's yeah. why you wouldn't wrap your whole app in um, user context because you need to be able to get the you need to have the user context provider within um, within that first level because that's where it's getting the, yeah. the information, the state, yeah. and everything from. Okay. In, in this case, yeah, we're we're we, you know, for whatever reason, let's say we want our state here in, in this component, and so we can pass that in. So if you were using a state from intermediate one, then you would need to wrap intermediate two in it, essentially. R wrap intermediate two in user context provider so that you could access whatever the state was in intermediate one. Yeah, so uh, if intermediate one, so yeah, let's say intermediate one had some state that needed to be shared uh, elsewhere. You could create another context object and wrap intermediate two and, or any other component farther down that, that would need access to it and, and do the same thing. Can you show the consumer part again? Is there anything that is user yeah. context dot consumer or is it just that yes. you're- so, so I'm, I'm using the, the functional hooks way of doing this. Um, if, you, if you wanted to do the class-based way, um, let me try and do that. Okay, and then, so here, we don't have the hook, so we'll have to use the provider. So we have imported user context. Yeah, which I think it might have to organize this a little differently. So user with the provider. Yeah, I, I might change the logic and I might make protected page know whether or not it's, it's logged in. But so we have uh, this context that provider. Move that up. And then in order to use uh, to use this here, it's a little different. We can't just use it directly. We actually have to create uh, a function that can use that. Um, so we in here we'll create a function and then this will be the uh, user stuff.
And here we pass in the, um, the protected page. We could do something like, um, Let's take a look at the dev tools. One sec. I gotta return this, sorry. Um, Liner, and then let's render this component. Check this. Getting the value. Oh, I you, called it provider. Call it? Sorry. Instead I, of consumer. Yeah, oh. sorry. Um, Okay, so you can see that it's now getting this prop. And I'm just gonna add the control here on the protected page. So So, and when I log in or out, I can see that I'm changing what gets displayed here. So it does the same thing uh, and we could move this up a, another level higher, but the hooks are simpler, um, but you can do it with class-based components. Did you say that you can um, use that user con user context dot consumer above where you're actually going to use it? Like, if you put user context dot consumer inside of intermediate two, could user could intermediate three also access it? Um, or do you need to do it again in intermediate three? No, I believe um, I believe it will give you access to the I'll pass it on the the one that's closest yeah okay. well it's closest to it and if you had more than one um more than one thing in state then would you just in um in your original user context that provider value 
make make that an object instead of instead of just um, right now you have value equals is logged in. Yeah. If you wanted like is logged in and yeah, you know, yeah you what could, time it is or something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You could pass an object. You can pass in whatever you'd like here. Um, so you can do, let's see, use a context. Protected page is logged in, user stuff, protected page. We do is logged in. Right, It's not a function. No, oh, it might be. Uh, let me see this. So my function should be. Fine. So let's go back to app. It should just be returning hi. Let me try calling it there. Do we have to get it out of the consumer in the intermediate three? It should be getting that whole object. Let, yeah, let me check the, uh, what's getting passed in here. So this user stuff, this should be, this should be everything, uh, but it's called is log. Okay, so I call this is logged in. So let me give that a better name now. Um, What a great name, user stuff. Um, so now in user in this protected page, so this should work now. Let me just try props. Uh, props dot user stuff. I think I'm not uh, deconstructing far enough in. Let me just see. Yeah, so there's the function, and if I call it, I get hi, and so now I'm gonna pass that in here. So it's calling that function now. So you can pass in you know, anything, any JavaScript thing. The, again, the short story is the context API is a convenience for man, 
basically centralizing information, you know, could be state basically or props or you know, certain functions to manipulate those. So you don't have to go through all these intermediate steps or pass props to every single thing if a bunch of things need it. You just put it in one place and then you can consume it where you need it. So Chad, will we be able to see this video later on today? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll post this up as soon as it's done. I mean, it takes, you know, half an hour or so to process, but. Thanks. Yeah. All right, well, if there are no more questions, we'll stop. <laughs>